Hi, I'm Ryan Avery from Schneider Optics. I'm here in Los Angeles, California today to show you how to use the Brazil Aladdin Mark II wireless lens control system. So the question is, why would you want to wirelessly control a lens or a 3D rig or any system? And the simple fact is that a lot of times you cannot have all the people that need to be near the camera actually touching the camera. So that's why these systems become very important. If you can imagine if you had a focus puller, somebody running zoom, somebody adjusting the rig. See there you have three people crowded around the tripod or the rig on the camera and it's uh, simply too many hands and too many people in one place. So this way you can take somebody who's operating focus only, you can have them several hundred feet away operating focus but via a monitor or you could have them standing right next to the rig. It's your choice but the control this the Aladdin Mark II gives the ability to wirelessly control an entire system all at once, two lenses. It would also, you can imagine, be very difficult to take iris and zoom on two lenses at once and time your hands perfectly. So this gives you the ability to perfectly track both zoom, focus, iris, all at once if you want. Uh, you can divide up between two different operators, one person doing iris only, one person doing focus only. So it gives you a lot of options for that. So this is the uh, Crozeal Aladdin Mark II system. Uh, I'll be talking about today. We have here the motor control unit. Moving to the lens, we have the wires that connect the lens, which are a standard uh, Limo connector. And then we have two different motors on this uh, camera. Here we have a uh, Canon 7D equipped with a Schneider Cine Xenar lens, and the motors that are controlling it is the Hayden M26VE motor and the Betts Tools motor. Uh, the Crozeal Aladdin Mark II system can use any brand of digital encoder motor which are connected with these wires. Moving over to the hand controller which we have in several pieces here. Uh, this is the hand controller for the system and it's assembled very simply with these snap connectors here and here. And it is a modular motor so it can be connected any way by simply locking. We have the focus and iris controller and then the zoom controller and then finally the battery which again just goes in and locks. We have the antenna which goes on the top and that assembles the hand controller. Again any of these components can be stacked in any way and uh, so you can find the best and most comfortable ergonomic use. The, on the main controller, the antenna connects here. If you choose not to do RF and you choose to do wired, you can connect these two with a standard BNC cable. Now that we have assembled the hand unit, I'm going to show you how to connect the motor control unit to the motors. We simply take these Limo uh, connectors, we connect it to the top motor port, which is our focus, and then we have our iris motor, which we're going to connect to the third unit like that. Now it is connected and ready to set up. To set up, we simply power. There is no physical on-off switch on the unit. It is all through power. You can either do a four pin 12 volt uh, XLR port, or you can do a D-tap off of a brick battery. To connect, it's the same type of Limo connector. Part that says power camera, and we simply connect this. And now you will notice that the screen comes on with the Crozeal logo, meaning that it is ready to be set up. Now that we have set up the motor configuration, the Aladdin Mark II is capable of controlling eight motors simultaneously. Uh, the first two connections are for focus channels, and uh, the Aladdin Mark II is designed with 3D in mind. So the idea here is that we have ideally two, mo two lenses that we want to control focus. So they default to focus. So these two are focus, the next two are iris, the next two are zoom. On the opposite side, motors seven and eight are set for what Crozeal terms angulation, which is the same as interaxial, and base, which would be the same as convergence. We also have, in addition to the motor control ports, we have here a camera port. The camera port is for remote start on off on cameras that are enabled like with that such as airy cameras or red cameras. The power, cam the power is uh, for the power connection. 
the second auxiliary port two is for uh, f uh, future proofing, uh, specifically if we decide to add features like metadata or other features later. At the moment, the Mark II is not capable of that, but we designed this unit with uh, future in mind. Auxiliary one is a similar function. You can add other, uh, other accessory cables uh, if you want to. This here we showed earlier is the antenna connection, and again, you can use a hardwired BNC connection if you wish to uh, not use wireless. These lights on the side, they're a little bit hard to see, but these show if the motor is configured or not. They will flash red if they are not configured properly. The Aladdin Mark II also has a USB port, which is usable for firmware upgrades. Crozeal continues to provide firmware upgrades for the motor control unit as the demands of cinematographers change. We also have a connection for hard wiring to computer, again for future use with software if you wish to control the unit from your desktop or laptop. And now we're going to perform a setup function on the Aladdin Mark II. To set it up, we have all our wires connected, we have the power connected, the hand controller remains off for this section, and uh, what we are going to do is first press this focus button. I pressed it once to wake up the screen. You'll notice that none of the lights here are lit up. It says test focus, test iris, test zoom, and test 3D. Everything for the setup can be done without the hand controller on, and it's a simple press of a button. We have this Hayden motor connected to the lens, which is running this connection wire to here which is the focus port number one. So all we're going to do is press the F button for focus, and you'll notice the motor will begin its calibration sequence. The motor is going to go all the way to the end stops of the lens, at which point it will stop once it's found all the end stops. Now the motor has found the end stops of the lens, and it is ready for function when the hand controller is switched on. Now we have the BETS tools motor connected to the iris of the lens with this cable going into the third port which is the very first of the iris ports. Again remember there are two focus, two iris, two zoom. So all we do is to calibrate the iris we simply press the iris button and the motor will find the end stops of the lens and the iris calibration is complete. For the purposes of this demonstration, we do not have the zoom, the two zoom ports, or the angulation or base control for 3D setup. But if you wanted to calibrate those, it would be the same as the focus and iris. You simply press the zoom button, it would calibrate the zoom motors, and you press the 3D button, and it would calibrate both motors. For the purposes of 3D, the motor calibration on 3D is linked together. It would run the cycle on each motor, finding the end stops. Um, which we will get into later. Also on the face of the controller is the uh, screen on and off buttons uh, for waking up, the escape, the lock. If you press both these buttons at once, it will lock the setup if you did not want anyone touching it while you were inadvertently touching it while you were away from the unit. And of course the OK for execution. We have a series of li three lights on the front of the display. The first light is an uh, error warning light telling us that the, uh, this particular red light means that the hand controller is not on. Uh, the green light means that it has power, and there, this light flashes blue. This third light flashes blue uh, for firmware upgrades and other functions. Uh, diving into the menu system, uh, you simply press OK for setup, as the screen indicates. This is the basic control system and our menu system, and here are the up and down arrows and the plus and minus once you're inside a menu. We'll start at the uh, middle section here, which is load defaults. Anytime you turn on the system, you should always perform a load default to make sure that any uh, previous users have not uh, set any interesting motor configurations that you're not interested in. You simply press OK. Press the down arrow to execute and press the OK button again. Now we have loaded all the defaults. This will not interfere with your motor setup, uh, the calibration, but it will change any special motor configurations you've done, which we'll talk about next. To control the motor configurations, you simply go up 
to motor configuration 1, press OK. And each motor M1, if there is a motor connected, it will tell you if there is a motor connected and it says no motor, then you need to check your cables or recalibrate the motor. So M1, it says focus. Remember, you can change any of these. The basic setup for 3D is focus, focus, iris, iris, which is focus, focus, iris, iris, zoom, zoom, zoom times two, angulation, and base. To control a particular motor setup, you simply press OK. It will take you into the most complicated menu, which it says here, link to, and in here you can choose focus, iris, angulation, base, or zoom by that. So if you have multiple focus, if you want to pull focus on, say, eight lenses, you could do it. Each one can be fully configured for different control. Moving down, we have the mode. The Aladdin Mark II is capable of operating a DMX dimmer. If you had an on-camera light that you wanted to operate, if you wanted to change this, again, press the minus. It's now for the dimmer mode if you wanted to control dimmer. Most common application is going to be motor. The next is the range. There's normal and extended. The normal range will turn the motor, the digital encoder motor, 2.5 turns uh, per motion. The extended range it will turn the motor 10 turns for more rapid turn. This rapid turn, 10 turns extended range is for 3D rigs, side by side, anything with a very long worm gear drive where you wanted to be able to turn multiple times to get to the in stop faster. For most lenses, almost all lenses, it's going to be, excuse me, start that over. For most lenses, it's going to be the normal range. There's also direction, direction of turn. Normal is a normal direction of turn. Reverse is if you have two motors, one on the left and one on the right, you would need one motor to turn to clockwise, one to turn counterclockwise to get the same motion. So you can set one motor for reverse or one for normal. Matching is if you want to have two lenses that have different infinity points. Sometimes you will calibrate the motors and one motor will be stopped at five feet thinking that it's infinity and one will be at infinity. If you want to match the two for the purposes of 3D, you simply select yes and then press the OK button. These reference points here, these numbers, are essentially meaningless to the average user, but what they in indicate is the digital turn points of the motor. So if you want to select a different turn point for purposes of matching, if you change these values up or down, what will happen is the motor will move just a couple little stops at a time and those little small adjustments will get you back to infinity on one lens versus the other for the purposes of 3D. So once you've completed the motor configuration, you can press the escape button to go back. You can go through this through each motor. Once again, motor two, this port here is not connected, so there's nothing to calibrate. And motor three, which is connected for iris, it is assigned to iris. You can press the OK button and do the exact same setup as before. You could tell it that it's a focus motor if it was. Uh, this is simply for labeling purposes. There's, there's no need to designate it if you have it connected to something else unless you want to remember what that channel is for. We have the power menu. The Aladdin Mark II is again powered by either a 4-pin 12-volt XLR or a D-tap from a brick, a brick battery. You can also use a 4-pin a XLR to a standard power connection for the wall, for a wall powered. So we simply go press OK in the power setting. We have the motor torque. You can set that at numbers one through five. The motor torque is for a lens that has a particularly stiff amount of travel on it. If you have a lot of resistance, you can set a higher power setting or a lower power setting if it's particularly loose. The uh, max input current can also be changed in number of amps. The idea here is that if you're running off of a brick battery or something with a lower amperage, you can set it for a lower input amperage, or if you're powering it off of a standard uh, wall socket, you can crank it all the way up for maximum power. The amount of power that comes, the number of amps that come into it uh, does not affect the performance if you have this properly set. The motor should be able to go full power depending on the power setting you have. 
So that's where that you adjust that. To escape this menu, you simply press the escape button. Another interesting feature of the Aladdin Mark II is the RF channel, radio frequency channel selection. We go to the RF channel in the menu. Again, hit OK like all other menu settings. And you will see here that there is a channel number. You can set this number on here and then also set the corresponding number on the hand control unit, which will then give you the correct frequency. This, spec this green light down here, green bar down here, is the spectrum analyzer. The Aladdin Mark II has the ability to see other RF channel frequencies in that range, and you can check for interference. If you have a lot of interference, then you'll have multiple red bars showing up, and you want to try to get your green bar here as far away from those as possible by selecting the channel number. This way, you can avoid interference. To escape, we simply hit escape. Great. What's next? Cam control. This is the cam control function of the menu. Cam control is for one of the auxiliary ports, uh, specifically the power, the camera port here. The camera port you can connect to the remote start on an ARRI or a RED camera or any other camera with a remote start function and you can either do pulse or static. If we press the plus button here, it will go to static. Different cameras have, require a pulse for operating the remote start and some require a static function. Depends on the signal type. Uh, different manufacturers have different requirements for this, which will usually be in your camera operation manual. The default is pulse because this is the most common, so we'll leave it there. We hit escape to exit that part of the menu. Remote start, or as the Crozier Aladdin Mark II calls it, camera, is to go to into the usually 3-pin for ARRI or 11-pin connection for remote starting the camera for starting and stopping recording. And there are different needs in the menu for either pulse or static signal, which you can set, which will be in your camera operation manual. One final part of the display is the link connections here. When you switch on the hand controller, these will light up. It shows you your strength of signal and the fact that you have a hand controller linked with three functions, which our hand controller is currently set up for. Even though we do not have a zoom, which you'll see the link connection, there is a zoom controller on our hand unit, which is corresponding saying that if we wanted to connect a motor for zoom, we could and control it. So this is the Aladdin Mark II hand controller. If you remember from the assembly, these units can be taken apart and moved in almost any order internally here. For more information, please visit our website at www.digitalcinemacourse.com. And that was the Crozeal Aladdin Mark II. Thank you for watching the Digital Cinema Course.